coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following is a Learfield presentation of My Sports Network. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House, welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. Now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. We made it. It's uh, a little wet. I'm not lying. A little soggy here around uh, the Bayou City, but we made it. Another edition of the Mike Bloomgren Show here at Acme Oyster House. Not one, but two Monday night football games on the big screens. One of them featuring our uh, very own uh, Austin Trammell, the sheriff there. Uh, a lot of uh, dangling things for me to uh, pay attention to, and I should be uh, looking at you all. But cool. I uh, got the news just before coming on air that uh, Austin Trammell uh, activated there for the Rams. A lot to get to on this one. Uh, a very wide-ranging show on this one tonight. We'll uh, tease in just a little bit. Uh, Rice falling to those Bulls of South Florida in a wild game that we'll uh, break down with Coach coming up here in a little bit. Um, the game Saturday against East Carolina is coming up. Remember, that's a 6 o'clock start. Uh, ESPN Plus broadcast. You can sync us up the Varsity Network, the Rice Game Day app as well. Parking opens at 2 coming up on Saturday. Tailgate Alley opens up at 3. Uh, tailgate on the east side of Rice Stadium. Food trucks, shaved ice treats, both of them together in one spot. It is true. It's uh, going to be a fun, fun uh, families weekend there uh, for Rice and the Pirates of ECU. They have not played, of course, not being in the same conference forever today, but uh, just before Thanksgiving 2010, uh, Rice won the most recent meeting against them. Um, and we'll talk about that coming up later on in a little bit, too, breaking down Coach Houston's Pirates, who got their first win of the season, uh, shutting out Gardner-Webb. A lot to get to between now and then. Um, on the show tonight, after uh, Coach Bloom comes up in a matter of moments, uh, we'll uh, talk to, in no particular order, uh, Connor, not all at once. There, there is a rhythm to this, uh, a method to the madness. Uh, Connor Gorney is assistant strength and conditioning coach and uh, football sports science coordinator. Connor, you pumped? After a little uh, pre-interview, kind of like the, the green room. Getting, getting in. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, we'll also talk to a, uh, a name and a face very familiar around Rice and the uh, city of Houston. She will keep you on your toes with your uh, your balanced portion, my mother being uh, was a uh, dietitian. I, I know a little bit about her side of things. Um, just need to take that advice a little bit more. But uh, Director of Performance Nutrition, uh, Roberta Anding, is joining us. Excited? She's a vet. She's got more radio experience. She should be hosting the show. Actually, yeah, she uh, she knows what she's doing. We'll talk about some of her radio background and what she does. She is uh, busy with all the different rice sports. And then we have Dan. Hey, how are we doing? Uh, Dan Gritty is the analytics coordinator here at Rice. Uh, very just studying up and cramming uh, for, on his background. He's got a really cool story leading up onto his uh, football side of things here at South Maine. But um, coming up in just a bit, we'll get on to the uh, football side of things with Coach Bloomgren. Remind you here at Acme Oyster House, it's 1201 Westheimer. Uh, here's to Red Beans and Rice University. Acme Oyster House, proud sponsor of Rice Football. After the game, come join us for a fried seafood platter, shrimp po' boy, 
or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in Texas. Had to throw down some meat pies beforehand and went back to those uh, Boom Boom Shrimp Tacos. You cannot go wrong here at Acme Oyster House. And we'll get this thing going. By the way, we're on the stream here, the Rice Athletics uh, Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it, in addition to Facebook and YouTube here on our Twitter. Uh, Walter has graciously assumed those duties so I can uh, focus up here. But So a lot of ways to get to us here on the Varsity Network app as well in uh, ricehouse.com. Stay with us. More coming up here at Acme Oyster House. We'll talk to Coach Bloomgren. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppers. In football, it's about calling the right plays. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppers. Shoppers has a right size John Deere tractor with attachments for any job. You can build your tractor online with Shoppers' exclusive Build It, Price It, Own It tool. See all our John Deere specials by Googling Shoppers at S H O P P A S. It's time for you to make the right call. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas, and proud sponsor of Rice Alley. Athletics. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar, the talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come Acme, bro. Not you. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Aw, oh, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync, Sync my, my Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. 7 to 8 each Monday night here during the football season, talking some uh, Rice House football with Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach of our Rice House, Mike Bloomgren, as we are right now. Boss, a little dry? You dry? You dry now. You dry yeah. off, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't have to float over here or anything. Those, those nice Houston pop-up showers that get all of us. It was. It's one of those times where you're very thankful for the bubble because it was kind of right in the period, period uh, 9 or 10 and the bottom just fell out. And, you know, it sounded like uh, the uh, the guys must be crazy outside with all the lightning and thunder going on. But we got our practice in and somehow uh, made it through the swamp getting back to the building. Yeah. And, uh, here we are. Yeah, I was able to go today and that, that thunder lightning really fired up the guys there, that tail end of practice. Yeah. They liked that a lot, didn't they? So tell us about Saturday, uh, 42 to 29 South Florida. doesn't uh, tell the story of how back and forth, I think five, six lead changes, the first two and a half quarters, just your your thoughts after a couple days away from that. Yeah, I think we're going to look back at that one and, and know that obviously we didn't get the result we wanted. And, uh, you know, we put in a lot of good work for that. And uh, we had some guys make some good individual performances, but that's not what our game's about. Our game is the ultimate team sport where you got to find a way to to be better and score one more point, whatever that looks like. And, uh, you know, we had some, like I said, some great performances. Guys like Luton Caffrey, Chris Conti, Myron with, I think, 11 tackles each. Those guys, you know, really playing some good football. And I don't question ever how hard our guys play, you know, and, and I thought they played for, for 60 minutes in terms of their tempo. We just got to make sure we win our one-on-ones, especially when you're playing an extreme system like that on offense more frequently. And uh, we got to play top down. We can't give up those big plays. And we got to take advantage of more opportunities. I mean, we had the ball in the red zone and, and didn't convert. We had two field goals missed. And just things that cost you when you're playing a conference game against a, a talented football team. And it did cost us. Um, so it's far from back to the drawing board, but it's it's a day where you had to watch that film and watch it with a critical eye. And we had to look at what went wrong. And then we've got to come back out and go to work. And, and like you saw at today's practice, our guys did. And they're excited for this opportunity to 
play a game this Saturday. On Saturday, JT Daniels, uh, 432 yards passing, the third most in school history. Uh, I, I was thinking this morning, uh, he, he would have had 500 easily if he was able to stay in the rest of that game. How's, how's he doing, and, and what did you think of that performance Saturday? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Number one, I thought he did a lot of good things, and uh, it threw some balls into tight windows. But you know what? We've got guys playing with a lot of confidence out there, too. It's not just Luke. It's guys like Ross McNeil stepping up as a redshirt freshman and making some great plays, including the last one he caught from from AJ, but I agree with you. I wish we could have finished the game with JT. Uh, obviously, that fourth and eight, you know, he held onto the ball. He was trying to do another magic act and get out of some, some stuff and, and got rolled up a little bit. When he came back to the sideline, he wasn't quite able to go then. And by the time I think we could have got him back in, AJ was really hitting the rhythm. So we went ahead and left AJ in there to finish out the game. He let us on that touchdown drive. It was just a little too late. You know, we needed to. Either get the onside kick or get a three and out to give ourselves another chance, and we weren't able to do either. So, uh, again, you talk about JT's performance. Yeah, the kid's playing some really good football. He's seeing it really well. He's getting it out of his hand, and, and he's really being that field, field general that you want out there. And I saw you tell, told the media after the game that it's probably a shorter-term injury than longer-term. Is that still a case after the doctor got a, a, another look at him? Yeah, we got some good news today. and uh, You know, I think we'll see that dude throwing the football here pretty soon. So uh, I don't know exactly if that will be tomorrow or not, but uh, we're very optimistic about the way this thing's going. Good. On the other offensive side of things, you mentioned uh, Luke McCaffrey, a career-high 199 yards, a second most in school history, and he went over the 1,000 mark. Uh, yards wise for the the second fastest to the great David Hauser in school history just I I like trying to ask the same question different ways but you you are at all amazed any more about Luke than the rest of us that the plays he continues to make that seem to be his best overall game if if that can even be measured just by yardage it definitely was he's the ultimate like I'm competing with myself and I'm going to try to raise that bar every single week and you see it in the way he works on Monday practice Tuesday practice Wednesday practice and and then he does go out I don't I don't know I mean there's going to be a play every game where you're just amazed you're like wow great job Luke you know it's It's not the standard play. He does those. He makes those now with consistency. He gets more yardage than he should. But the catches, the one-handed catch on our sideline uh, from AJ was just incredible. It's uh, unfortunately it's becoming commonplace, right? It's like, oh, another great loop catch. Okay, next play. Yeah, maybe more pop tarts, but more pop tarts. (laughs) Uh, He was also honored as the uh, Texas Player of the Week by by one of the bowl games today. Uh, We're going to get that stuff out uh, on social media. I'm sure Chuck already did, but. There's just, it seems like it's a different honor every week for Luke, and, and it's great that he's earning it. And once again, people are taking notice of certainly him and JT. And, uh, but we got a lot of other players that are playing good. We just got to get 22 of them doing their job every play more consistently. Dean Connor's playing well. He had that 80 yarder in that first play coming out of one of those breaks late in that game. How about Dean? Not only just that sequence, but the way he, we saw it in the U of H game too, paced you in receiving and rushing in that one game. But just talk about, I call, started to call him Dino on the broadcast, how he has just uh, really contributed in a, in a few different ways. Yeah, he's doing a lot of things for our football team. The thing that I thought was exceptional is although we didn't give him the ball very often uh, because of the way the game went, because we were throwing it really, really well. He, he affected the game, like you said, with the 80-yard reception. He affects the game by getting a third and three on a run to go, you know, what's not blocked exceptionally well. He makes it happen and goes and gets that it's different than he did the week before. And so that's great growth for him. And then uh, late in the game, we threw him one on fourth and three where the corner's kind of just waiting there, and he willed us to make sure we move the sticks. Uh, so those are the kind of plays he's making we trust him to make. I, I do think he can have more effect in the running game, and obviously our running game needs to – be more productive from the onset of every game uh, just to give us the uh, the ability to be in position to run the ball when we want to. But right now I'm joking with him that he's a passing back. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get him back into the running back room before we know it. Yeah, you mentioned the running game. Was that something scheme-wise you think USF was doing and just it kind of compounded after that? No, I, I think that's more about our one-on-ones. It wasn't things that were scheme-wise where we were overwhelmed or outnumbered or anything like that. There's just a couple times where we were one block away. And, uh, you know, that's that's a good and bad thing, right? We're, we're all sick of being close. And so we want to get to the point where we're getting our jobs done and, and putting 11 people on the right people and, and giving this thing a chance to go. And 
I really believe we can do that. And so again, they, they are very good defensive players, but we're good enough to get our job done offensively as well. On that defensive side, what are some of the things you like? You already mentioned how you, you don't want to give up so many big plays, but what, what were some of the things you, you like defensively? Yeah, again, like it's an extreme offense. We understand what it is, but the number of negative plays that we caused, I think we had eight TFLs and it seemed like it was either a minus three or plus 40 there in the second half. We just got to get those negative plays and be able to take advantage of them, put somebody behind the sticks and get off the field. And if we can do that, uh, the other encouraging thing is with the game in the balance, them going down to score, getting a turnover on the two yard line. It's the ultimate like belief of, of race fight never dies. They're not in until they're in and we find a way to get the ball out. And, uh, then the next play is actually the one we hit Dean on. Mm -hmm. Now, talking to Mike Lundgren here on the Mike Lundgren Show here at Acme Oyster House. Uh, let, down the line, as, as you get into conference play, obviously that break against UConn coming up, what, what do you like about getting to this meaty middle part of the schedule where it's not the early part of the schedule, it's certainly not late, but uh, we're in, you're in the flow of things. Uh, what, what do you like about this stretch of year? JP, I got home late Saturday night, but not that late. There's no way you're going to get me to talk about anything but East Carolina. Tonight. I want to know, baby. I want to know. I like it. See? Uh, talk about our guest here. We have uh, an eclectic guest of uh, Connor. Let's start with him. Connor Gorney, assistant strength and uh, conditioning coach, and uh, things he does along with, with Hans and the staff. Yeah, so all three of these people affect our football team day in and day out. What they do, trying to – they're all behind the scenes, right? Nobody's really talking about any of these three right here, but they should be because they are, are finding ways to make our program better and make our players better. And so Connor was brought here, handpicked by Coach Straub from the University of Colorado. Mike Sanford was their uh, interim head coach last year. I called him about Connor, and he just raved. He was like, you don't believe this guy. I had had him. I can't remember where they worked together before, but he's like, I love him, and he is the best with the GPS technology. And so the GPS, all our players, uh, all our starters have on the GPS. So he's crunching data every day of what a game looks like, how our Monday practice should be 40% of an actual game output, how we're, how we're getting more towards 70% on your Tuesday and Wednesday practice. And like it's, it's all this technology of, to make sure we don't have, number one, overuse injuries, but also to make sure that we're, in, uh, we're training at the right level to be able to have the best game we can have for that individual. So there's so much science that I wouldn't do justice. That's why he's here to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Roberta, uh, I hope she doesn't look at my plate today, but Miss Roberta Anding, you know, we use her in recruiting because uh, it looks like when she puts up a slide with all the letters she has after her name, it's like the alphabet. But the biggest ones I always tell her are the fact that she's worked in the National Football League and Major League Baseball, and that's what blows our parents and our student athletes, prospective student athletes away. But she is so selfless. She's at breakfast making sure everything's running smooth and the student athletes are feeling right. She's at pregame meal, giving up her Friday night to check their plates. And, uh, and they, they all respect Mr. Burton now. Like if of course. she comes for them, they're going to they're gonna listen to what she says and, and, and take it to heart. And they're going to, again, become more hydrated. You understand how living in this, this climate that we do, how important hydration can be. Uh, she's just a tremendous asset. And then Dan Gritty is... Uh, maybe the smartest human in our building amongst some very smart people. A uh, guy who's been a head coach at Rhodes College, uh, not, uh, I think 15 total years as a head coach at two different places, and a Vanderbilt grad who was with Jerry DiNardo, and, uh, just some, some really interesting coaching stops along the way in, in his background. He's is like many of our coaches who started out using their degree. Uh, so ask him about his prior career before he got hooked into this coaching thing. <laughs> But how he helps our team and how he helps me is analytics and, and taking things to the next level, understanding situational football. It probably went, uh, pr most people probably didn't notice what we did after we scored that touchdown in the fourth quarter, but we went for two. And it's a concept called Osborne because if you get that two, now you have the opportunity to score two more touchdowns and kick two more extra points and win a game instead of tie the game. And if you don't get it, then you have a chance to go for two the next time with a 50% probability of the two-point conversion and at least still be in a position to tie the game. So it's, uh, it's all interesting, the numeric part of it, and you need somebody a lot smarter than me to, to help execute it. And he's uh, a tremendous asset on game day. And you're balancing that while you're obviously focusing on some other things, but just what to implement it at a certain times too, right? Absolutely. But he's just so – and, again, analytics is not just – when you should go for two. It's not just when you should go for it on fourth down, but those are huge parts of it. The other thing is like teaching situational football to our student athletes and, and monitoring all the situations that come up in football games across America or in the National Football League 
that he's able to talk with your coaches came up last week. And some of them are just great reminders that you haven't seen happen in 18 or 20 years. And some of them are like, man, I've never heard of that. And so it's great to educate our team so that we are ready for it. And I can't tell you how many examples have come up uh, where we put that analytics to work and it's helped us win football games in the last two years. All right, Coach, we'll talk more in a little bit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't leave your family a football coach. Of our Rice Sal's Mike Bloomer. We'll chat about Mike Houston's uh, Pirates coming up uh, later on. But coming up next, the aforementioned Connor Gorney, assistant strength and conditioning coach. He'll join us next here at the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting blessed. Down he goes. The speed. The 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. Mr. College football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You can unhitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the board. Back to the end zone. 30. 20. See you guys to this one. This is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. Whether running a marathon or walking your dog, every movement matters. But when you're in pain, simple activities can feel unbearable. At Houston Methodist Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, our specialists can help you heal faster using the latest technology, minimally invasive procedures, and advanced physical therapy. As the top-ranked hospital in Texas, we have the expertise to keep you moving and help you get back to doing the things you love. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls. listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. It is a great spot to be. A lot of folks coming in here for not only some rice football talk, but some good oysters. They've got the uh, oyster shucking station, nice bar in the corner. Uh, and we've got Sydney and the folks uh, serving us well here at Acme Oyster House. Some great, great grub. Uh, we'll talk to uh, Roberta Anding, Director of Performance Nutrition, coming up next segment. But right now, uh, joined by Connor Gorney, Assistant Strength and Conditioning Coach and, and uh, Football Sports uh, Science Coordinator. Busy business card, but you do a lot of things, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for, for coming on out here on a nice uh, wet night. I guess things are okay now, but what inspired you to get into the strength training side of things? You're telling me during the break, hey, you, you played some growing up, and, and what, what, what made you kind of choose this path? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, just for me, I love being around sports. I love being around a team atmosphere. And then as, a, as an athlete, I feel like I was always interested on like, the ways that I could be better physically. And so when I had the opportunity to study it in school, that's, you know, I ran with it. And at Colorado, Coach heard Coach say in his uh, last remarks, uh, what, I know coming here you got the recommendation from their coaching staff. So des describe that path coming over here and what led to uh, and maybe considering Rice and eventually taking the gig over here with Hans and, and Coach. Yeah, so I worked with uh, Coach Mike Sanford, as he, as he uh, alluded to earlier, at Utah State University. So Mike was our OC there while I was there. And, you know, we, we developed a really cool bond there, and, you know, he was, he was awesome to me. And then he got the job at Colorado, and, 
you know, he brought me on there. He reckon my, uh, recommended me to their head of performance there to get me at uh, University of Colorado. And that stop, you know, ended pretty abruptly, as everybody knows about. And I was looking for a job, and, you know, those guys were trying to help me out. And a position on this staff, you know, opened up and talked to Coach Hans, talked to Coach Boom, and, you know, <laughs> seemed like an awesome fit. So really happy to be down here. Since we were joking at, at practice, and but thankfully in the bubble, I said, I promise it gets a little cooler after this. Yeah, acclimated to our, our wonderful climate here? Yeah, uh, I'm still getting used to it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this, the past couple of weeks have been a lot nicer than the month of August. So growing up in the Chicago area, but actually in Indiana, right, right across the border? Yep. No basketball in the bloodlines? or uh, No, I'm too short, man. Okay, well, hey. <laughs> so what... What inspired you for the football side of things? Like, who, who were some inspirations there that eventually got you on this path, too? Yeah, definitely my dad. He grew up playing. And then my uncle was a longtime high school football coach at Providence Catholic High School in Illinois. So it's always been around the family. I've always been around, you know, high school football, football in general. So All ball. Definitely. <laughs> so tell us about, uh, Coach was mentioning the, the GPS stuff. I don't begin to understand all of it, but I understand what it's used for. So... What, what goes what goes into that? And I saw you in the corner today. You stay very, very busy in each practice, don't you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're fortunate here to have Catapult GPS. Um, so it allows me to track basically all the movements from, you know, our, our starters and, you know, a few other players um, live while they're actually doing them. So I can give real-time feedback to coaches if it's if it's needed. And if not, then, you know, we're building out trends and we're making sure that, our guys are set up for success. Yeah. Do you find that you still being a younger guy, the technology changing makes it pretty easy to adapt? Because I imagine in your side of things, not just on the strength side, but implementing the tech easier to implement at the same time. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's definitely you gotta you know have your eyes peeled and be dialed into practice at all times. But it's definitely easy, you know, having an iPad. At, you know, it's right there in your hand, and it's easy to just kind of plug and play. Hans was up here last week talking about some of his duties and he was giving uh good remarks of course to the staff well deserved uh from your side working with him what's it like being under him and and obviously him hiring you you owe some gratitude but w what's it been like these months uh work with him and the rest of the staff yeah super grateful for him i tell him all the time and i tell some of these other guys um on our staff about how i believe right now the program that we put in place since i've been here is the best strength and conditioning program i've ever been around and that's no bs that's you know that's you know that's real um he is extremely dialed into everything that we do. He spends, you know, tons and tons of hours on making sure that we're dialed in and we collaborate. And I just feel like what we have in, in place here at, at Rice University is the best I've been around. Mm -hmm. Who's the sneaky strongest guy on the team sneaky, that, that maybe guy. wouldn't wouldn't think of it? Um, hmm. I'd say Dean Connors is up there. I mean, he's he's explosive. He's fast. He, I mean, he's a super powerful dude and. You know, he's, he's got the strength to back it up as well. And Ethan was on here last week as well. Okay. Are you going to be your biggest lineman as far as uh, throwing, throwing the weight around or uh, somebody on I the think he is. I think he is the strongest guy, yeah. Okay. I, I need him as my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he'll need some too eventually. Um, what do you see as the season wears on, things adapting on the strength side of things? As, as Obviously, guys, part of the game get banged up, but how does that change the way – yeah, y'all work with him as a staff. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think right now football is, you know, the main thing, right? And so we want ball to be the main thing. We just want to be there to help basically these guys recover. So, you know, a couple of days after the game, we get them in, we get them moving, but just more general movements. And then, you know, come Wednesday, we get them kind of snappy again. We get them working more of our explosive movements and trying to get them to move fast so that they can apply that, you know, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for coming up. No, I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Connor Gorney joining us here, assistant strength and conditioning coach, football sports science coordinator on the GPS going around. Stay tuned. Coming up next, uh, Miss Roberta Anding will join us coming up next. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House from Learfield.
big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. At Shoppers, we get all kinds of John Deere tractor questions, like what horsepower tractor do I need? Do I need four-wheel or two-wheel drive? What kind of attachments do I need for my John Deere tractor? The Shoppers tractor experts have the answers to all those questions. Or you can go online and create your own John Deere tractor with our Build It, Price It, Own It tool. It'll give you costs along with finance options. You can see all our specials by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsor of Rice Owl Athletic. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. We are back here. Another uh, half, half done, half to go here on the Mike Bloomgren Show at Acme Oyster House. Don't forget next broadcast, Rice House football coming up Saturday. That's Family's Weekend there at Rice Stadium. Back. Good to be back home. Uh, be on air at the Houston Methodist pregame at 530. And I'll preview more of those Pirates uh, coming up in a little bit with the boss man. Joined now by a... Very familiar name and face across the uh, Houston landscape and at Rice, Director of Performance Nutrition, Roberta Anding. How are you doing? I am doing great. How about you? I can't complain (laughs) one bit. Good. Uh, No stranger to this radio side of things. Your gig with the Texans, you were telling me uh, during the break, did you like doing that over that stretch of years? Oh, I loved it. Um, I was with Dan Riley, who is the head strength coach. Probably the most irreverent person to be on the radio with, and so I always have to reel him in, and then he would tell me not to be so clinical, so it was a great, great relationship, but eight years. Wow. Eight years we did our radio show, Roberta and Riley. Wow. And you grew up in Wisconsin. Yep. What, like I asked Connor, what inspired you to get into the uh, nutrition side of things? Well, I decided I was going to be pre-med. Got a C in freshman chemistry and thought, ah, maybe I'm not that smart. So I went on to switch to nutrition and realized that my science background was as much as my husband, who's a physician. So it's a perfect blend for me because it's the prevention Mm -hmm. of disease as well as motivating young men and women to be the best athlete they can be. I've heard you in the past talking to baseball Mm -hmm. and you do obviously stuff all across athletics. Uh, What's uh, the typical process like depending on the season? Because there's obviously so many players and athletes across all the sports and so many meals that (laughs) on the surface to me it seems like I don't know how you would start, but but you have a system. Well, we have 380 student athletes, plus or minus, and so usually in the preseason I'll go in and graciously Coach Bloomgren invites me to come in and talk to the team and talk to them as well as the recruits coming in. And after that, it becomes more individual consults, like how can I help an individual athlete improve in addition to building um, a nutrition program for a team. Okay, so on football, how does that vary by position? Because obviously you've got Mm -hmm. the the big fellows. We had the linemen here last week, but the the DBs are going to be different. So how how does that? Absolutely different. And I'll give a shout out to my buddies in strength and conditioning. I can't do my job without them. And also a shout out to our great athletic training team. And I get all kinds of feedback from them on, well, this guy's injury prone. We're seeing this. What would you suggest doing? And so the nutrition is going to differ depending on the speed of the position. So a lineman's job is to be a mountain 
and if they're running, generally things aren't going well. And then the DBs and wide receivers, it's about speed, explosiveness, all of those things. And so the nutritional requirements are a little bit different depending on the type of athlete they are. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine, too, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. The calories are the calories, and the basic core is still the same as much tech comes. Is that kind of the case, or have there been a lot of tech things that just totally alter the way you would look at, at something. Yeah, and Connor and I were talking about this, getting ready for the show, and I think with all the great data that he's collecting, I always ask myself the question, how does nutrition fit into tech? And so if somebody's dehydrated, does it change what he looks at? If someone's under fuel, does it change what Deanna, our head athletic trainer, does? So it's that integration, and it's, as Coach Bloomgren said, the ultimate team sport. So I need to have my teammates kind of get me up to speed on what's going on with an athlete. So what do you enjoy most about your job? You do so many different mm -hmm. things, and I, I kind of sense it be the one-on-one, -on -one, but hearing from you, what, what, what do you enjoy most? I love it? that. I love the one-on-one, -on -one, and the, the huge blessing for me is to take have someone come in at 18 and then work with them throughout their career and watch the maturation. And these are rice athletes, because they're, so they're really smart, and how much I can educate them over that four-year period of time. And then nothing gives me greater pride than to see some of our owls in the NFL <laughs> that um, I've worked with and had the pleasure to work with while they were here. So the one-on-one -on -one is it for me. So dummy nutrition question, as the season goes on, is that different too or is that pretty steady once they're in spring ball versus mm -hmm. fall camp versus game 10 of the season? Is it still kind of the same thing depending on their diet? It is. It, 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 it changes throughout the season. And so as Connor said, you know, when you get into just thinking about football, part of football is it's an injury. Every time somebody goes out, it's a brutal game. It's a hard game. So during the season, it becomes all about recovery. How do we get you recovered for the next game and get you better recovered than your opponent? Mm -hmm. So what about the other athletes on campus? Like I know obviously a football-centric show, yeah. but the other seasons, that, that keeps you pretty occupied as well, doesn't it? It does, and that's what makes my job the best on Rice <laughs> campus because I get to take care of 13 teams and take care of my female athletes, again, a little bit different than I would my guys. And so once football kind of winds down, baseball's winding up, and then we've got all the track and field and all the other things going on for Rice Athletics. Coach mentioned, and, and you talked about your time with the Texans and also Major League Baseball. Is that with the Astros? With the Astros. I don't mm -hmm. assume anything. But uh, how is that dealing with the, the college athletes versus the, the pro athletes? I'm sure a lot of different dynamics. Big differences. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one is money, right? So if you have a whole lot of money, you can buy all the kind of great food that you, you need to perform. But with a collegiate athlete, we do a great job, and Rice Housing and Dining does a great job in, in preparing our meals for us. And so the difference is what happens on the weekends, what happens if someone doesn't have the same kind of resources. The other huge difference is there's a collective bargaining agreement in pro sports that <laughs> kind of tells me what I can and cannot do. So it gives me the rules and regulations. And so again, collegiate sports is, of all the things I've done, collegiate sports is a blast. I really love working with this environment. So grew up in Wisconsin. Where did you go to school? All that good stuff. Well, I went to LSU. So um, okay. I went to LSU for undergraduate and graduate school. Didn't want to stay in the cold north. Grew up a huge Packers fan, and so I was probably the only girl in my class. Clearly didn't play football, um, <laughs> but only girl that ever really watched football. So I grew up loving and watching football, so it was a great transition for me to be the director of performance nutrition. And tell us about any staff or people that work alongside you. Ah, well, I'm an N of one, and so I take care of all the athletes on my own, but I have two fabulous graduate students from Texas Women's, and they help me to get the structure and the educational programming in place, and they do some of that for me. So we extend our staff with some of our great students from the Houston area. Awesome. Uh, when basketball season comes, sometimes I need to fill in for these shows. So <laughs> can I get the info? You can just fill in. You can sure, talk to Coach. Sure, Yeah, Give you absolutely. Few, see? Piece of cake, right? Piece of cake. Piece if of Nate cake. can't do it. If, <laughs> but you know Nate forever, too, right? Yeah, I've Nate. known Nate forever. Yeah, yep. so easy to – I'll just shove him out of the way. He'd be my <laughs> preference now. Don't tell him that. Hey, thank you, Roberta. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. Thanks for having us. Roberta Anding joining thank us you. here, Director of Performance Nutrition. I learned something. I like that. I learned something. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll learn more as well. Anal analytics coordinator Dan Gritty joins us here at the high table. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show at Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. 
My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char-grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. <coughs> Not you. Back me Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. At True Anomaly Brewing, our greatest achievement lives in knowing that everything we've learned is yours to enjoy. While it may not be rocket science, we brew with the same detail and dedication learned while running mission operations for NASA. Taking risks is part of our DNA. We don't take them just to say we did, we take them because of the result. Bold brews we're proud to share with fellow adventure seekers. True Anomaly Brewing. Beer for the explorers. The newly renovated Houston Marriott Medical Center Museum District is a proud new sponsor of Rice University Athletics. For visiting families and fans, the closest hotel to Rice University is delighted to offer preferred rates. Guests will enjoy two new restaurants, a new exclusive M-Club lounge, and complimentary shuttle service within two miles of the hotel. Visit Marriott.com to learn more. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting blessed. Down he goes. The speed. By 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. college football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You cannot hitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the board. Back to the end zone. 30. 20. This is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season. You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. And it is indeed a great spot to be. Got two Monday night football games to choose from eventually here. I guess about an hour, you got some Astros on the tube. I uh, got the Eagles and the Bucks up there now. You all probably know by now which team I am rooting against. And we've got our very own Austin Trammell uh, with the Rams and the Bucks, where we just were there. I guess yeah, that's on the big screen right now there at Raymond. Ray J, as the locals called it over there. You're not an Eagles fan, are you, Dan Green? I am not. Okay, didn't want to immediately offend you. Pats? I am a Patriots fan. Boston guy, okay. Yes. So, yeah, let's uh, continue the show that was off the air. Um, fascinating backstory, but you go in to Vandy and you get a political science degree, know some stuff about history as well. When did sports enter the equation and, and the coaching, obviously, before? Sports, sports was here? always a large part of my life. Um, and through high school, obviously, uh, playing high school football in Boston, it's not the same as what's necessary in the SEC. But, um, you know, from a standpoint, sports was always a passion of mine. I, I think you think of those, that moment, moment in City Slickers where Billy Crystal's talking about the one thing that he could always relate to his dad about was about baseball for there them. And go. the same thing for us. Like, my dad and my relationship was, no matter what was going on, sports was always something that we could relate to each other. And so it, it took an important role in my life. Sox, Pat, Celtics. Yeah, nope. Boston, Boston, so just straight through. Assume Bruins yep. too. Yes. Kind of, I'm a hockey dummy, but uh, so, um, what what did you immediately do after go, going to Vandy? And so of, after after Vandy, I, I went to law school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, um, and then practiced uh, law on Wall Street, representing companies in labor and employment matters for. Almost six years, um, and then uh, was able to go do something I actually like doing. <laughs> when was that aha moment? <laughs> uh, so, you know, the aha moment for a lot of us of my age was uh, September 11th when wow. we lived through, you know, a tragedy, but it also made you get uh, a greater appreciation of doing things in every day that matter to you rather than just mm -hmm. going through the motions of life. Were you near the towers that day? Uh, yes, uh, I wasn't that far away. It was like 10 to 12 blocks away. Okay, so what did you do immediately after, not just that moment, but just when you kind of knew you are changing, what, what did you move on to then? So I was able to get uh, back in contact with the Vanderbilt coach, Jerry Donato, who was the head coach at Indiana, and uh, he offered me a spot there to be a graduate assistant, and I was with him during his stay at Indiana, and 
and been coaching ever since. And you had a tenure recently at Millican College yes. and uh, a strong stop at Rhodes College as well. What did you learn on those stops, you think, that helped you now here at this stop? Well, I think there's two fundamental things about that experience that play in every day at Rice. One, being smart and being intelligent in classroom does not mean you can't be successful at football. I categorically reject that. So when we're faced with situations where we might be playing a team that's like, oh, you're a bunch of nerds we're playing against, that should be a badge for us because we can win with that, not in spite of it. Um, and then the second thing is, okay, to do that, we need to find advantages across the spectrum. Analytics is one of those things. That's one of the things that drew me to Coach Bloomgren was that there was an inefficiency in the market, in the, in the market basically, of the Pac-12 at that point in time. Uh, everyone was throwing the ball all around the yard, um, and he was able to develop an offense uh, at Stanford that was different than everybody else and was able to dominate the conference because of it. And, and so I wanted to see how that worked, how he was able to develop something that's so inherently different than what everyone else was doing it, that it created a, an advantage for him. So that's a... You know, what really interests me about coming here to Rice, and, and so hopefully I am able to give back half of what I'm learning from him. So when did you hook up with, with Coach? Or uh, so we, we started talking in summer before last season, and then it just worked out so I could uh, come down here and was with him for the season last year and have been here ever since. So, so much of the analytics stuff I know is... Uh, proprietal i don't want to give away any state secrets by all means but i know a lot of it is known throughout different circles but um is that another thing coming with the term it's it's changing i mean there's there's so many things that you adapt from one season to the next or is it pretty standard across no i, I think it's changing every day and one of the things that hopefully we do at rice is we're ahead of the curve changing and so you see situations that are coming out like we coach mentioned the osborne two-point conversion three years ago no one was doing it Two and a half years ago, maybe Staley at the Chargers was the only one doing it. Um, and we did it last year, and, and now you're seeing it become quite accepted in, in approach to, to games. So I, I think that the field is constantly changing. You know, all Coach asks of me is to make sure that whatever I'm advising him to do is defendable at the press conference. <laughs> and so I am perfectly, I think that's perfectly acceptable bandwidth to work, operate on. Um, and, and so we, we go through things, and I'm able to hopefully give him some information that allows him to make uh, the right decision for us. Yeah, because we see this, hear this in the pros. I mean, it's the same, like, it's not all of the decision, and it's not, I mean, it, it, it has to be a balance because you got living, breathing human beings out there. It, it will never cease to amaze me why people would deny extra information that could help them make a proper decision and instead rely on data and, and thoughts from 1950 or 1960. <laughs> you wouldn't do it in any other realm of life. Why would you do it in football? Well, along that line, I was going to ask this in a different way, but what's the most misunderstood thing about a post like this, whether it's at Rice or just anybody that would have your, your job? I, I think, one, the, the fundamental math is misunderstood. Like, you know, I don't know how many times I've had conversations about two-point conversions where they're liking it to a flip of a coin. Flips of a coin, obviously, are independent events. There's probability. So if you don't get that first second, first two-point conversion, your probability of getting that second one is significantly higher. So uh, I think that's probably one of the misconceptions. And the second misconception is that um, you don't take football into consideration or you don't take the players into consideration. You know, the number one thing on a fourth down decision is that you need to understand if we go for it, fourth and one on our 26-yard line and don't get it, How's the team going to respond? And so Coach has done an amazing job explaining these situations to our players so they know when we go forward and forth and one in that situation, <laughs> we're going for it because we believe in the offense. But just as much as we believe in the offense, he believes doubly in the defense, knowing that we can put them in that situation and they will be able to, to hold up and, and serve the program well. So it's fascinating. I mean, we could, we could go on a long time about this, but where did analytics come in in your, obviously the coaching, like when, when did you pick it up because, and like what were the infancy stages of analytics that you used? Yeah, so I, I saw it as a, an inefficiency in the market, you know, uh, not to harp on Roberta a little bit, but, you know, how many games did you have to watch Les Miles coach at LSU and realize he didn't have a clue how to manage a game? <laughs> like at some point you can sit there and say, wow, why are you doing this? Or you can say, okay, you want to do that. I'm going to find a way to use that against you and other people who are following your philosophy. And so that first took place in two-point conversions and fourth downs. 
Now it's taking, you know, it's moved to sequencing of plays, understanding that you have the ability to call a run play on second down, knowing that it's going to set you up for third and fourth in better stead, or calling a pass on second, knowing that you have a two additional downs. So those types of sequencing are really where, where the, the crux of the debate is coming. Now, there'll always be things, like there was an article the other day about whether you score to go up six, should you go for two or kick the extra point to go up seven? Common sense generally dictates going to seven in that situation, and we certainly would. But there's now beginning to develop this data that says, well, in that situation, depending on the time on the clock, it might be worth going to eight. So those type of things will always be there. And I view it like a college professor, right? They go out there, they say something outrageous, and the whole class gets in an uproar, and then they discuss it and work through it Socratically to come to a conclusion that maybe that statement wasn't all that outrageous. So I think for me, that's a large part of what analytics is. We're going to find different segments to talk about, and then we're going to drill down, and maybe it is crazy. But after we drill down, if it isn't, we're going to figure out a way to use it to our advantage and rise. So it's just about getting more data, too. It is. It is. And, you know, baseball obviously has a hundred different individual points on each game or each inning, whereas we're, you know, we have 11 people doing something, 22 people on the field. So in those instances, a lot of the individual data can be misleading. It's about aggregating data and looking at trends and, and in that way trying to figure out what's the best way of doing things. You know, the other thing that's coming up right now, and, and uh, uh, you saw in the Notre Dame-Ohio State game, we were on the plane coming back, but I got to figure, uh, see it afterwards, where in normal instances, Ohio State calls a timeout and saves, and, and saves five or six seconds on the clock. But Coach Day was, well, we're, we're not going to call a timeout in this situation. We're going to hold on to it. So when they get the intentional grounding, they have the timeout to use to prevent the 10-second runoff. They don't beat Notre Dame unless he has that timeout in his pocket. So... Um, you know, those are the type of things you might not see on the outside that analytics is dealing with, but are very much involved every day. I promise I'm not sucking up to you, but my, one of my favorite movies is Moneyball. Okay. Yes. So we need a football version of Moneyball. And Absolutely. I think I know a guy now I'm with your wall street pool. We got rice folks. We can, let's, let's make this happen. Come Money, on, Moneyball can... applies to everything we do, okay. hopefully at rice in the sense that, you know, what is intellectual brutality? In intellectual brutality is an inefficiency in the market that coaches decided to take advantage of. What's he do? He gets on base. Tell him. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. So when Nate and I are talking on the broadcast, the big decision. Oh, Dan Gritty. There you go. Uh, these there you are, go. I just give okay. coach information. Yeah. Coach is the one making Stand. the decisions. No. Hey, thanks. That's fascinating. You Thank go you. on and on. Thank yeah. you very much. Very, very enlightening. Um, Stay tuned. Coming up next, uh, boss will come back and we'll talk about those ECU Pirates coming up. It is the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls. 
football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppers. In football, it's about calling the right place. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppers. Shoppers has a right size John Deere tractor with attachments for any job. You can build your tractor online with Shoppers' exclusive Build It, Price It, Own It tool. See all our John Deere specials by Googling Shoppers at S H O P P A S. It's time for you to make the right call. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsor of Rice Owl Athletics. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Always appreciate y'all coming out and uh, those tuning in tonight on the stream, video, audio, or both. Uh, wrapping up now, talking about the ECU Pirates. First time in 13 years that these two teams have played. Obviously, they've been in different conferences in that time, but what do you know about Mike Houston? Not just the team, but the guy and uh, style uh, of, of coaching. I guess his third year there, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what year it is for him, but I go back with Mike Houston to 2002 uh, when I was at Catawba College in North Carolina, and he was the head coach at um, at T.C. Roberson High School in Asheville, North Carolina, and he was one of the schools I recruited, and uh, I actually took Laura to a game there when he was the head coach and watched the Friday Night Lights, and I, numerous times I would go through there and sit there and talk ball with him, and so it's pretty funny that both of us are head coaches today and, and get an opportunity to play this weekend. They're one and three after a 44 nothing win over Gardner Webb. They played Marshall really uh, close earlier. They had, went to App State. They had a tough one there. So what what what's been the the flow identity of this team? You know, it's interesting. I mean, they're a team that went eight and five last year and and had a great year. And obviously, they had a quarterback change this year. And and right now, they've got three guys playing that position, uh, or they played three in the last game. They really got two that are playing the position. Uh, but you just see a lot of things that are in flux there. And uh, the thing is, I know he's going to get it right. I've seen him do it at every level of football. And uh, the thing you never have to worry about is Mike Houston's defense. It's always going to be sound. He's he's back with a defensive coordinator head at James Madison. And what you see is a, a defense that's always trying to take the ball away. Matter of fact, they had five takeaways on Saturday. And eight times the ball came out. They forced the ball out. So they're they're a defensive staff that teaches that incredibly well they emphasize turnovers and i can already tell you one of the things in our pregame talk will be protecting the football and it's got to be and then we got to take it away some we got to take advantage of every opportunity we get to get that ball back and and put the ball in the box talking to brian smith today talking about their offense they spread it out but they still like a lot of the spread teams still it's they not just pass it but they really really want to run the ball yeah they do you know and, and that's not uncommon but Again, they're, they're, they're kind of a mixed bag, right? You're going to see them put the ball in the, in the belly of the back, but you're going to see some element of the downfield passing game come up as well, the play action stuff, and they're running the quarterback. So that's always something that's going to cause Coach Smith uh, sleep during the week. <laughs> All right, how about our guests we had on here? Um, talking with Sydney this morning, we were lining it up, and I was doing my research. Uh, great job by, by y'all, of course, but just tell us about Dan, Roberta, and, and Connor, how, how cool that it's been, like – what what they contribute to the team yeah i think just listening to them it's like it's no secret how valuable they are to our team first off and and number two like just think about the incredible resource they are for our student athletes in every case the big thing i thought about as i was listening to them talk is like how far that sports science because really at the end of the day all that stuff even the analytics falls under that umbrella to some to some degree how much has evolved since i was in the nfl in 2010 you know like GPS, I think we had just got them in 2009 with the Jets. We had no idea what to do with the information. <laughs> and not only do we have them here, but we've got somebody with a great background that's, that's given us data. Nutrition, uh, we had nutritionists, but I will never forget at pregame meal, the D lineman would race to the, the tray to pull out the white bread at the bottom of the bacon tray. That was like the prized pregame oh, yeah. thing. And Roberta would literally fight one of our guys if they did anything like that on game day. <laughs> and so like we're so so grateful for that. And Coach Gritty, like you can just see, you can see how absolutely yeah. brilliant that man is and how lucky I am to have him and our team is to have him. Uh, but a couple things there, like analytics you talk about like what's done at the sloan deal at at, um mit and the sports science things like all those analytics like football's always been ahead of the game we always broke things down situationally better than anybody else but now what he's able to do for our team in game is just so next level and uh people aren't taking good enough advantage of it and it's certainly a uh a resource i'm glad we have 
Hey, Coach, thanks for the time as always. Talk to you tomorrow at the presser. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Dunleavy family of football coach, our Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Rice and ECU coming up Saturday. Remember, it is Families Weekend. Bring on the old family out the uh, tailgate on the east side of Rice Stadium. Uh, parking opens up at 2. Tailgate Alley opens up at 3. Got food trucks, shaved ice streets. And, oh, yeah, we got some uh, great Rice football coming up at 6, 5.30. Nate, Walter, and I have the broadcast getting underway. Appreciate Appreciate you all for coming out tonight. Thanks to Connor Gorney. Okay, all right. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I'll clap yep. for them. Did all right. Thanks. Uh, thanks to Roberta Anding, Director of Performance Nutrition, and the Dan Dan Gritty. I didn't ask him if he could do the gritty. I was reserving. Oh, it's been question. done. It's, it's been, been done been... after a big win last year in the locker room. Okay. It's been done. Dang yeah. it. That was the yep. oh on the tee. Next year. <laughs> next year. Next year. We'll do that. All right. Have a great rest of this night. God bless. Go Owls. Rice fight. Talk to you Saturday. Rice and ECU. This has been Rice Football from Learfield. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, you've been listening to the Mike Bloomgren Show live from Acme Oyster House. Acme Oyster House.